Kathy, you good? Good evening. I'd like to call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the City Council for the City of Calistoga. It is Tuesday, April 3rd at exactly 6.01 p.m. City Clerk Flamson, has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Can I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Lopez Ortega? Here. Councilmember Barnes? Here. Councilmember Krause? Here. Vice Mayor Dunsford? Here. Mayor Canning? Here. Uh, please note that City Manager Feek, while not with us, larger than her other two sons. Congratulations. Well, hopefully uh, baby and mom are doing well. They're doing well. Thank you very much. All right. If you all please uh, make sure that your cell phones are silenced and then stand and join for a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God since our last regularly scheduled session the council has had two closed sessions the first one was on uh, March 20th and it had two items on there one was a real property matter discussing Ter financial terms and conditions on Eddy Street, which will be an open item for discussion later on in this agenda. The second item on that same date was an employee review, and it was a closed session because it's an employee matter, and it was the annual review for the city manager. Um, that has nothing to do with why he's on speakerphone and not actually physically here. <laughs> uh, the review went well. The second closed session we had, which was a special closed session, was on the 28th of March, and it was a real property matter. Uh, involving 1435 North Oak Street and there is no also known as the fairgrounds and there's no reportable action at this time with that said I'm going to open oral communication oral communication on consent items or non agendized items so this time is set aside to receive comments from the public regarding matters on the consent calendar or matters of municipal municipal concern not on the agenda pursuant to government code section 54954.3 also known as the Brown Act However, the council cannot consider any issues or take action on any request during this comment period. Speakers are encouraged to limit their comments to three minutes maximum so that all speakers have an opportunity to address the city council. And just as a remember, in 2012, this council adopted Rosenberg's rules of order and a couple of things to keep in mind. There is no allotment of your time to another speaker. And please appreciate that others may feel as passionately about their position as you feel about yours. With that said, I do not have any speaker cards. Is there anyone interested in addressing the council on anything on the consent calendar or a non-agendized item? All right, not seeing anyone move toward the podium. I'll close oral communication. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda this evening as presented unless a modification is requested. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Krause, a second by Councilmember Lopez Ortega. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to Council requests and ideas for discussion. Councilmember Lopez Ortega. Not much today other than um, uh, leg streak start looking great. So hopefully very soon all our Calistoga streaks, they will be fixed. Thank you very much. Councilmember Barnes. Nothing tonight. Councilmember Krause. I'll second but Iris just spoke of and it's great to have that bridge at least mostly open and uh, things are rolling along I know on getting the streets repaired and up to date after the winter and uh, long time in coming but great to see thank you vice mayor Dunsford nothing tonight uh, and the one item I have and Kathy will correct me if I get this wrong as uh, we will as you know Barry Street Bridge is open um, and only with a slight delay considering some of the challenges we've had over the last six months. Um, but Barry Street is open to traffic, both pedestrian, bike, and uh, vehicular. But we will be doing an official ribbon cutting uh, on the 13th at 10 a.m. And have we decided which end of the bridge we're going to? So it'll be in the newspapers, and uh, all are welcome to come visit and uh, celebrate this momentous occasion. Um, it'll pretty much be a big deal at that point, right? You've driven over it a couple dozen times. Um, with that said, City Manager Feek, we're on to the City Manager's Report. 
nothing this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move on to proclamations, presentations, and awards. The first item is April is Sexual Assault Prevention Month, and it's a proclamation. And I believe Judy Durham is going to receive this. All right, I will read it, and I'll join you at the podium when I'm done. City of Calistoga Proclamation. News about sports. Recognizing April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Whereas across the nation, April is recognized as Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and whereas news is committed to the prevention of sexual abuse throughout Napa County, and whereas recently our, count, our country has seen the power of many voices coming together through the Me Too movement to say to the world, sexual violence is real. It is a common experience and it must end now. And whereas one in three women and one in six men experience some form of sexual violence in their lifetimes, and there have been incidents of sexual abuse here in our own community. And whereas you sports coaches are an overwhelmingly positive influence on youth uh, of all ages, and whereas news aims to support coaches by providing resources to promote healthy, respectful relationships, gender equity, and positive character development, and whereas research finds that by supporting coaches and parents involved in sports programs with repeated positive messages, providers like News and EWS can help build protective factors against violence. And whereas News is introducing a local campaign called News About Sports, a countywide effort to prevent sexual <coughs> abuse through positive youth development through sporting leagues to instill confidence, character, connections, and compassion, which are all protective factors against sexual and domestic violence. And whereas we, the City of Calistoga, support the efforts of news and ask the entire community to join in their effort, not only in April, but all year long, to bring parents and coaches and the community together to be part of the effort to end sexual violence. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that I, Chris Canning, Mayor of the City of Calistoga, do hereby proclaim April 2018 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in Calistoga, and I commend this observance to all citizens. Signed, Chris Canning, Mayor of the City of Calistoga. So I will join you here, and then you could tell us about uh, the organization and the program in particular. Hi, my name is Judy Durham, and I'm here with Araceli Vargas. We are both advocates of the sexual assault program at News, and I'm, maybe I'm preaching to the choir here, but just to let you know that we serve all sexual assault victims in Napa County, all ages, all sexes, um, from Calistoga all the way down through American Canyon. And I would like to thank the chair and the council members for allowing us to come and talk to you tonight. According to a recently released Department of Public Health report, there were 948,000 individual victims of sexual abuse in California in one year, 2012. Because some assaulted were, more, were assaulted more than once, the number of incidents was over one million. Preventing one rape saves $163,000 and one sexual assault on a child would save $227,000. Now that's one year, that was in 2012, and I can assure you that that number of assaults has gone up and that dollar amount has gone up. And we, the taxpayers, are the ones that are paying for this. These statistics are mind-blowing, and while this is happening, the investment in prevention is going down. That is why the new Sexual Assault Victim Services Program is choosing to kick off, sports term, this campaign we are calling News About Sports. Now we're kicking this off in April, but it's gonna be a year long campaign for us. And we feel that youth sports such as T-ball, Little League, and a wide variety of sporting goods from, from the little youngsters up through high school and colleges have the potential to reach a large number of youth and with their coaches and with positive social, social messages 
which create a foundation for the prevention of sexual assault. And we really, really believe that prevention is where it's at. We have got to start with these young children, even in preschool, talking about healthy relationships, respect for each other, respect for, for men, women, boys, and girls. And waiting until they're in high school and colleges, we feel is just too late. So we are gonna start down as low as in the youth programs as we can get. We'd like to start by attending these functions and distributing, we have water bottles and we'll put positive message inside of them and just give them out throughout the year. We know that coaches inspire youth and, and act in ways that promote positive character traits, compassion, healthy, respectful relationships, and gender equality. We at NEW see the importance of working with sports clubs, parents, and youth groups to help provide support to them in promoting positive messages. We will be distrib distributing these bottles throughout April with some informational materials inside, and this is just the beginning. We view this as an ongoing effort throughout the year to spread messages repeatedly through the county over time to help create a more positive, safe, and healthy culture. When we change the culture, we reduce violence for generations to come. Thank you for supporting our efforts, and we know you're all community leaders, and the community looks up to you, so we really appreciate your support. Thanks again. Well, thank you very much. You're, uh, you guys do an, an amazing job in this county, um, and I know that you have done quite a bit of work up here in Calistoga, uh, and we appreciate that um, based upon how far we tend to be from uh, that other part of the county, uh, but I know that your level of engagement's been uh, absolutely superior up here, so thank you for all of that. Thank you. Calistoga's always been very, very good in supporting us and calling us when needed, and we really appreciate that. Someday we hope to be at a point where we never have to call you. No offense. That'd be no, wouldn't it? <laughs> that'd be wonderful. No, that's, that's, that would be great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just so we're clear, these are worth less than $49 each, right? <laughs> okay. Otherwise, there's paperwork we have to fill out. It's, yeah, it's not pretty. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, next, we are moving on to a proclamation for arts in April. City of Calistoga proclamation, recognizing April as Arts in April Month, whereas the month of April has been recognized as a countywide celebration of the arts and local culture known as Napa Valley Arts in April by dozens of arts and cultural organizations, hundreds of in individuals, <coughs> and businesses across the county, as well as by the agencies of Visit Napa Valley and Arts Cal Council Napa Valley for eight years. And whereas the arts and culture embody much of the accumulated wisdom, intellect, and imagination of humankind, and whereas the arts and culture enhance and enrich the lives of every resident, and whereas Calistoga residents have a rich history of celebration and expression through music, painting, performances, storytelling, and other diverse forms of crafts and arts as represented in the dozens of events held throughout April. And whereas hundreds of residents from each town and city come together in the creation of the County of Napa's Adopted Community Cultural Plan, which has been in place since 2008 and endorsed the following cultural core values for all of Napa County, self-expression in everyone's birthright is everyone's birthright <clears throat> the arts serve as a common language the arts are critical to a healthy economy the arts allow us access to our past to ourselves and to each other and the arts give us a sense of place and of home <clears throat> now therefore be it resolved that I Chris Canning do hereby proclaim arts as April as arts month in the city of Calistoga and call upon our citizens to celebrate and promote arts and culture in our county and to specifically encourage the greater participation by those said citizens in taking action for arts and culture in their towns and cities signed and sealed this third day of April 2018 and I think representing arts in April we have Carleen Moore and Jude Mullen there we are Judd sorry <laughs>
invite you. Thank you. Um, so this weekend kicks off officially Arts in April, Napa Valley Arts in April, um, which, as Chris, as our mayor just um, explained, is a month-long celebration of the arts throughout the valley, and Calistoga is host to that. And starting last year, that came under the umbrella of Serifornia. So um, if I can just take a few minutes of your time and just showcase some of the highlights that we have um, for this weekend. Serifornia is really born of the, sp the bohemian spirit of Calistoga through art, music, food, and wine. It's a, um, it's a program of Napa Valley Arts in April, which produces this month-long campaign. And in Calistoga, started out as a single event, Engage Art Fair, but has grown to be a collaborative and partnership-based um, weekend of activities that really celebrates the spirit of Calistoga. And so through several partnering organizations, including Visit Calistoga and Celebrate Napa Valley at Calistoga Art Center, there's a variety of lineup for the entire weekend, which kicks off beginning on Thursday evening with Flower Bomb. Um, Engage Art Fair kicks off on Friday. And then Creativity Crawl and the Storytelling Speakeasy are specifically on Saturday, and Art and Bloom is Saturday and Sunday. So our um, slides are off just ever so slightly, but this really features Flower Bomb, which is an exhibition of contemporary artworks that are paired with floral arrangements in a professional gallery setting. This event was inspired by the de Young Museum's annual Bouquets to Art exhibit, but perfectly and succinctly captures the vibrant spirit of Calistoga. The floral designs will be created in response to a selection of artworks by the current exhibition at Sophie Contemporary Gallery titled Artist Spring, The Fire and the Rose Are One, which seeks to understand the entangled feelings of loss after the recent fires and the irrepressible creativity of artists. <coughs> Featured artists um, for Flower Bomb include Armine, and I'm going to just butcher her name, I'm sorry, Shabazian, Charles de la Muir, Karen Lynn Ingalls, Shawnee Johnson, Christine McDonald, Leslie Morgan, Ann Pentland, Todd Pickering, Gregory Roberts, Bill Russell, Andrew Sophie, Joyce Stocksdale, Keith Wilson, and Karen Worth. Featured florists include Barbara Anna Floral and Garden Design, Calistoga in Bloom, Centerpiece Napa Valley, EV Floral, Garden Party, Kate Stanley Designs, Mary Contrary Design and Decor, Melody Ray Designs, Molly Jones, and Poppy Stone Floral Design. Engage Art Fair is an interactive and eclectic mix of arts and cultural programming that highlights the vibrancy and spirit of Calistoga. The 2018 roster includes 40 participating artists in this carefully curated exhibition, working in all mediums, and presented with an avant-garde flair. This is more than just art on display, as you can see by some of the photos. This is arts, artists demonstrating their creative process um, and starting with something, starting with nothing and creating something while you're able to watch and engage with them in that process. Guests at the Friday night preview party are encouraged to wear white to fully immerse themselves in the experience as they become a part of the canvas, allowing the art to really pop. This is the only ticketed event of the entire weekend of lineup. Everything else is all-inclusive and is free to the community as an effort to make the arts accessible to everyone. Proceeds from the Friday night party will go to help support ongoing art and cultural programming in our own community. There's more on that to follow. On the weekend, there's a complimentary admission to the art fair, again, keeping the arts accessible to all, and there are unique artist engagements um, as depicted here, including a youth chalk festival on Saturday, looming demonstrations, and a poetry thro uh, a pottery throwdown, and more. Again, on Saturday only, there's also the creativity crawl, as well as, and I'll speak on it in a moment, the storytelling speakeasy. So the Creativity Crawl is participating in galleries, the shops, and tasting rooms throughout downtown Calistoga. This is an activation of downtown's Calistoga art scene with live music, live light refreshments, and wine at participating galleries. You'll see chocolate painting demonstrations by Earth and Sky Chocolate's chocolatier, <coughs> Laura Korth. And the ability to mix and mingle with Bay Area artists as you stroll through scenic downtown on your way to the storytelling speakeasy. The storytelling speakeasy will take place at Tank Garage Winery. It's a curated presentation of local writers, actors, telling funny, charming, and poignant stories about what it means to live and be human. Designed to mimic popular podcasts like Moth and This American Life, 
The Storytelling Speakeasy is a celebration of Calistoga's identity as a bohemian safe haven for independent thinkers and creatives. Featured speakers include Barbara Austin, Bob Winters, Christina Julian, Yvonne Henry, Linda Liu and Michael, Kathy Carcel, J. Kirk Ferrisan, Kai Chang, Anna Manwaring, Nick Triglia, Colin McPhail as MC, and Napa County Poet Laureate Jeremy Benson. The final activity is Art in Bloom, and um, it, a correction on it is not just Saturday, but it is Saturday and Sunday, and it's brought to you by the Calistoga Arts Center, but it'll be taking place here at the Community Center. This is a free hands-on um, craft station for kids as well as families. So again, Serifornia is a four-day grassroots celebration of Calistoga's bohemian spirit and Calistoga's kickoff to all of Napa Valley Arts in April. It's this weekend, Thursday through Sunday. But all month long, we have a fundraising campaign underway with the Artini, a unique signature martini at each of these fine establishments throughout the month of April, where $5 of each Artini sold will be contributed to the Arts Fund for local arts programming. So drink up. <laughs> And thank you very much because Serifornia is made possible in large part to the Calistoga TID Committee and the Napa County Board of Supervisors. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Council support. members, any questions? Anyone in the public, any questions about the events? All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. You guys want to hit those lights in the back there? <clears throat> Got it on your first try, Keegan. That's impressive. That was the final test for what you're about to embark upon. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to uh, oaths of office. And this, as you could guess, involves our fire department. So Chief Campbell, would you like to come up and tell us who? And Kathy will take it from there. Good evening. Uh, this evening, we actually have two full-timers positions that are getting filled and in two part-time positions and as everybody knows Keegan's returning to us he was a, a member a while back and uh, we're excited to have him back so we have Ryan Smithers Blake McCormick Keegan Barrett Jason Pearson I'd also like to thank Jason for his service in the military he was in the military before he came here thank you turn it over to Kathy can I have you guys come up front please Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge the duties on the which I am about to enter. You're welcome to share with us who uh, has the honor of pinning you. This is Keegan's wife, Renee.
is Jason's father, Jerry McCormick. Blake. I'm sorry, Blake McCormick. And Ryan's mother, Pam. Thank you very much. Good bingo, guy. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your service to our community. Thank you to your families for allowing us your service. Um, the two new part-time positions that the chief referenced, uh, those, as many of you know, who've been following uh, our financial situation in Calistoga, we've been fortunate, and we're investing that back into the public health and safety of this community, uh, which has allowed us and allowed this council the opportunity to add more full-time personnel uh, to our department. Uh, and we're very fortunate uh, to be in that position to do so. Um, and thank you again, uh, Chief, especially to you for all you've done for this department and for this community. Um, after getting new personnel, I'm told that soon there'll be a request for new toys coming, and I know they're not toys, <laughs> um, but uh, this is all uh, in an effort to keep us uh, as safe as we possibly can, and we thank you uh, very much for those endeavors and we especially thank the folks who came all the way up from St. Helena for this pinning ceremony thank you thanks guys very much appreciate it I hope all of you have a long safe career yes. and a healthy one all right moving on we have a presentation this evening from our Registrar of Voters for the County of Napa, Mr. John Tudor. John, welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is my second time talking to the Council about the Voters' Choice Act, and I very much want to uh, recognize and appreciate the uh, support I've gotten, not only from the Council, but of course from the City Clerk, Ms. Flampson, from the Public Works Director, Mr. Kern. Uh, the Voters' Choice Act is coming to Calistoga, as well as to the rest of the uh, county. We are one of five counties in California who are pioneering the Voters' Choice Act, and I'm just briefly going to go through what that means to our voters here in Napa County and, of course, in Calistoga. The Voters' Choice Act came about because the California legislature recognized two problems we have in California. The first is that only three quarters of eligible citizens register to vote. And in a democracy, and as we heard earlier, some of our new firefighters have defended that democracy, we can do better than that. Napa County does better than the statewide average of three quarters. We're up in the low 80%, but we'd like to be at 100%. And in order to encourage that, California is now going to allow voters to, or eligible citizens, to register to vote up to and including election day. Before you had to register by 15 days before the election, now those last 14 days will be available for people to register to vote. And because of the Voters' Choice Act, we're going to give them more ways and more places to register to vote, and I'll talk about that in a moment. The second problem California has faced is the low voter turnout. Now, we had an excellent voter turnout in the 2016 presidential election in the low 80 percents in Napa County, which was in the mid-70 percents for the rest of the state. We're always above the statewide average on that also. But we'd like to increase that. And so the Voters Choice Act is going to make three major changes for Napa County. Currently, we have 90 percent of our voters voting by mail 
under the Voters' Choice Act, every registered voter up to 15 days before the election will receive a ballot in the mail. And that means that they have more ways and more days to cast their ballot, which is one of the key reasons that I opted to be one of the volunteer counties for this pilot program. There are five of us this time. There's Napa, Madera, Nevada counties, and Sacramento and San Mateo counties. And we expect, uh, we're, ma we're making wonderful progress, in part thanks to our partners in the municipalities, but we expect things to go smoothly. I'm not going to take a lot of time talking about the various changes. So the first one is everyone's going to get a vote by mail ballot. The second one is that we are going to have ballot drop boxes open for 28 days before the election at all uh, hours of the day and night. The one in Calistoga, and thank you very much, Mayor and the City Council, you've poured the concrete pad for our Calistoga drop box at your expense. We appreciate that. It's going to be on Fairway, facing the sidewalk alongside CalMart. And that will be yours. It'll open on May 7th and remain open until 8 p.m. on Election Day, June 5th. And we, of course, will make regular runs to that box to pick up vote-by-mail ballots that people dropped off. This is not a post office box. This is our box. Um, and so there's no postage required. People can drop it off there at any time they wish. And we'll be collecting those ballots and putting them in to the counting stream as we collect them. So that's the second major change. All vote by mail, ballot drop boxes, open for 28 days, 24-7 prior to the election. Then the third major change are vote centers. Now, with the change to vote by mail, there will be no more polling places. Uh, we used to have a polling place here at the fairgrounds in Calistoga. Uh, they, that will no longer exist. We've had a vote center. The other reason Napa County volunteered for this is we've had something like vote centers for the past 10 years, starting in 2008. It's been located recently at the fire station, which is where this vote center will be. <clears throat> and we've had those open for four days before the election. That's going to continue. That's the more days. So anybody who loses their ballot or didn't receive a ballot for some reason, and believe it or not, in my 20 years, I've had two ballots eaten by dogs. One was covered with dog slobber, and the other one had a big bite out of it. So those people can come to the vote centers and get a replacement ballot. They can also register to vote at the vote center and get a ballot right then, vote that ballot, and be in the stream of ballots to be counted. So that's the third major change, the vote centers that will be open. The vote center in St. Helena will actually open 10 days before the election and will be open on Memorial Day holiday we'll have a vote center open for 10 days in American Canyon. And of course, our office is open for the 29 days before the election and serves as a vote center, as well as other vote centers in Yountville, American Canyon, and the city of Napa. I wanted to just briefly um, talk. Is this a laser pointer too, Kathy? At the top. OK, I don't know if you can see this, but yep. <coughs> the other big change in this election are these ballot marking devices. So there's been a lot of concern about electronic voting. And these are not storing anybody's vote. What you do is you vote on this machine, and then it prints a paper ballot from these printers, which you have just like the paper ballot you got in the mail. You can check it. You can return it to us at the vote center, and it will be counted as a paper ballot. No votes are stored on the machine. And the reason we're using these machines is twofold. One, they can present any ballot in the county. The other nice thing about a vote center, unlike a polling place, at a polling place you had to go to your polling place and it only had your ballot. These vote centers will have 167 different ballots. So someone who works in Calistoga but lives in American Canyon who left their ballot at home on election day can come to the Calistoga Vote Center and get an American Canyon ballot and vote it. And these machines can display all <coughs> 167 ballots for the voter who needs that ballot. The other reason we're using these is that they're accessible machines. 
They have a device attached to them for someone who cannot see to listen to what's on the screen and make their choices by pushing buttons instead of having to read the screen. And so that's the other reason that we're using these. And this is a new technology for Napa. It's a new technology for California. Only three counties in California will be using these machines in the June 5th, 2018 election. So this is what the vote center will look like at the firehouse. And uh, we expect to have uh, a hopefully a good turnout of voters. And for the first time, excuse me, let me go back. For the first time at the lower part of this, we'll be able to register people to vote and they can then cast their ballot because that machine can display a ballot for a brand new registered voter once we know what precinct they're in. The final piece of this that we're doing is that the Voters' Choice Act, <clears throat> excuse me, requires us to send two additional pieces of mail to every voter in Napa County. The first one's going to come out in a couple of weeks. It's going to alert people to the new changes, that you're going to get a vote by mail ballot, that there won't be polling places, that there will be drop boxes, and that there will be vote centers. And we'll send out another one to all voters about 10 days before the election to remind them that they've received a ballot, that they still have time to cast it, and that the vote centers are open in case something happened to their ballot. So this is an effort to generate more turnout by voters during the election. So the final reason I'm here tonight is to encourage uh, people listening to the council meeting tonight and people in the audience, we need v workers to staff those vote centers. And this is not a one-day job like a polling place. This is actually going to be close to a three-week job, starting with training on May 14th. And it pays well. It pays between $15 and $19 an hour, depending on which job you apply for. I brought some brochures. They're on the back table. Uh, the jobs are now open on the county website. You have to apply online. The only requirement is that you're 18 years of age and either an eligible, you don't have to be a registered voter in Napa County. And you can, if you're a legal permanent resident, you can also apply for this job. You don't have to be a registered voter. Um, and we especially need bilingual. Uh, vote center workers in English and Spanish. A interestingly enough, and I'm not sure the council's aware of this, but you have a Tagalog speaking community in Calistoga. We just learned that there's a major Tagalog speaking community in the upper part of the valley. And so we're also looking for Tagalog speakers, Filipino Tagalog speakers, to help staff the vote center. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Council members, questions? I, I do have a question. Yes, um, Council Member Krause. <coughs> when uh, we had polling places, there was no political signs allowed within a certain number of feet of the polling place. I would assume that also extends to this assistance center. Absolutely. How about the ballot collection box by Calmart? Uh, well, that would be kind of hard to police, cause, but, but if we came out and found somebody had posted a yes on X sign or a no on Y sign right next to the ballot box, we would remove those. Uh, they are not treated as a polling place, but we would certainly make sure that we're, they're not being misused in an attempt to influence the people dropping them off. Okay. I would have the And so I couldn't go stand by the box and say, may I help you put your ballot in the box or something you might be able to do that but what you couldn't do is say who are you voting for if it's for George I want your ballot you okay. can't do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyone else uh, you said I believe that everybody will have a paper or a mail ballot at least 10 days before the election they should arrive the week of May 7th council member Barnes uh, so they will go out then now people who register after May 7th will get their ballot within a few days up until May 21st, at which point then they would have to come in and register at one of at our office or one of the vote centers. But then, didn't you also <coughs> say that these ballot boxes that Gary's going to guard uh, are going to be open 28 days before? Yes, they'll so be. You don't get a ballot until 10 days before. No, no, your ballot comes up. We, they should come around the same time as the ballot oh, box okay. is open. All right. right. 
We Thank will you. hope all ballots should be out by the 14th of May. The ballot boxes will have been there a week, but the legislature decided to open the ballot boxes or have them ready um, even as, because the first day we can mail ballots is the 7th of May, which is the same day that the ballot boxes so will be give, placed. giving them a little wiggle room. That's right. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> I just, I just want to say um, thank you because uh, all this information is available in Spanish. We will uh, make it uh, easy uh, for the Spanish-speaking uh, people to understand better. Um, I just want to thank you very much, Council Member Ortega. We had a note today from the Secretary of State, and I'll be posting on my social media sites a three-minute Spanish language video on YouTube about what I went through tonight. I took a little more than three minutes, but um, that is in Spanish. One issue that's raised is in the video they use belota, oh. and we use balota. <laughs> so we're talking to the Secretary of State about which is the correct word for ballot in Spanish, but uh, it's very nicely done, and if you look out on the county website or and we'll post it on the county website as well starting uh, this week uh, you'll be able to see that and recommend that your friends and acquaintances look at it so John in addition to the <coughs> ballot drop box which I've seen physically seen um, and I think it's uh, a long time overdue and having something that you can place strategically near a highly frequented establishment like a grocery store um, and I appreciate that um, so in addition to the ballot box and coming to the voter mm. assistance center, um, you can still drop your ballot in a mailbox absolutely. or at the post office. That's absolutely right. Okay. The ballots that you mail will require postage because they are going through the USPS system. The ones you drop in our drop box do not require postage. Got it. Um, and the hours of the Calistoga Vote Center again? They're going to be 8.30 to 4.30 Saturday and Sunday, the 2nd and 3rd of June, and they will be 8 to 5 on Monday the 4th, and 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Election Day, June 5th. Thank you very much. This is going a long way in making the whole process a lot more accessible, and the fact that now with the technology we have, you can register right on Election Day is uh, long overdue, as, as you would agree, I'm sure. Right, and the reason for that is that California now has a statewide voter registration system called VoteCal. So if somebody moves to Napa <clears throat> and registers to vote five days before the election and they were registered in Stockton, their registration in Stockton is automatically canceled when they register in Napa. And if they forgot that they voted in Stockton by mail and then register and get a ballot here and return it, we will check that before we count their Napa ballot. Not that they did it on purpose, but just in case they forgot that they'd gotten their ballot three weeks before and voted in Stockton and then, oh my goodness, I moved to Napa, I need to register to vote. We now have this integrated system statewide where all millions of California voters are hooked together and I and our staff can see everybody's voter history in California now, which is a brand new technology, as you mentioned. John, I have one other question. Yes, sir. Um, on this ballot box that we're going to have over by Calmart, uh, 8 o'clock, everything that's in there gets picked up? It gets locked at 8 o'clock. It's locked gonna, at 8 o'clock. We have okay. someone come out to lock the flap at 8 o'clock on election night. So one someone couldn't come there, let's say, at 9 o'clock on Okay, I'll put no, it in. No, we're okay. going to lock them at 8 o'clock, each one. We're going to have a poll work, a vote center worker leave the vote center at before 8, show up there right at 8 o'clock, lock it, and then at, before they leave that night, they're going to pick up those ballots and bring them with them. Great. And, John, I can't let you leave the city of Calistoga without asking this question. Yes, sir. Is there anything part of this new process that will lean us toward expediting the vote tallying yes you know how we feel about that. yes I understand so let me just say there are two things that are going to expedite it first of all with a hundred percent of the people getting vote by mail ballots we'll have more votes in our hands by Saturday before the election ready to count and we will count those so I'm expecting to have 55 to 60 percent of the vote counted and announced at 8.01 p.m. on election night. 
So that's, we're always first in the state, at least for the last decade. Napa County's been the first to report at exactly 8.01 p.m. So we've beaten all the other 57 counties for all those decades. So we're the first out of the chute for that one. Uh, the next count is not going to be that night because we don't have polling place ballots coming in. The next count will be on Thursday because we have to clean up and get ready. And we expect to get a nice new chunk of ballots on Thursday and then we're going to continue counting Thursday, Friday, and probably the next Monday to get the great bulk of ballots in, hopefully 95% of the ballots. Then we have those special ballots like we mentioned where people voted registered to vote on election day that we have to process carefully after the fact. So I would expect us to have the great bulk of the ballots in by Monday or Tuesday following the, within a week of the election. So we're, we're quick to report the first night, but we're, in my opinion, still slow to certify. Well, we, for the size of the county we are, but well, we are we're, we're improving well, on that. We'll we'll be well within the 30-day limit though that all registrars are given. We don't want to have the fiasco in Florida that happened in 2000. I'd, as I used to say, I'd rather be slow than wrong. So. All right. Thank you. Does anyone in the public have any questions about this? Uh, John, I have one more question. Yes. You said Mr. Vote Clark. California is the new integrated statewide voting system. Yes. Vote Cal. That's vote right. Vote Cal. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, in our last election, our presidential election, there were many allegations of voter fraud uh, on both sides. Uh, some of them continue today. Some of the states are taking incredibly insane measures, in my estimation. Others are doing what California is doing. How safe is that system? You have got, you've just put together an incredible database of people with vital statistics that a lot of these demographers and there's other words that I can hackers. only hear. No. <laughs> yeah, hackers. hackers right? Right. I mean, there's other words and descriptions of them that I don't understand what they could do with those statistics. How I assume this is absolutely safe. Well, let me explain or as safe why. as it can be. Right. Well, first of all, Secretary of State Alex Padilla has mentioned that there has never been a breach of the voter registration system in California. VoteCal is within firewall upon firewall upon firewall. To answer your other question, which is a question I get a lot is, you know, with big data, everybody knows you shopped at CalMart and what you bought. The voter registration files are confidential unless you file an affidavit with me that you have a legitimate purpose to use them, like for a candidate or a campaign or you're researching for the government. That's a signed affidavit with a driver's license attached. We don't release voter data. The voter data we do release is limited. You don't get to see certain parts of the voter record, uh, address, driver's license number, any of those kinds. I mean, address, yes, but not driver's license number, or birth date, any of that is not allowed except for studies which are done by universities to figure out who from which age group voted because they can tell if you voted how old you are, but otherwise that's not released. So the data is confidential, unlike much of what we're exposed to all the time. The other thing I want to point out, and I get to ask this question, thank you, Council Member Barnes, is the Russians, everybody, pretty much everybody agrees that the Russians hacked the 2016 presidential election, but they hacked the campaign. They didn't hack the election systems. And the reason they can't hack the election systems is that there's 7,000 of me across the country. That's a scary thought. But elections in the United States from the very beginning have been local. The townships in Massachusetts, the town centers in Vermont, we conduct the election at the county level. There's no state election system. There's no national election system. And all of us have, not everyone has a different system, but I would guess there are 30 or 40 different election systems in the United States spread among 7,000 elections officials. And the final piece of this, when I talk about these paper ballots coming out of these machines, those paper ballots get counted in our central office. And the machines that count them and talk to the server that keeps track of who voted and how they voted, not how you individually voted, but how many people voted for governor, et cetera. That machine and our machines are only plugged into the wall. 
They have no connection to the network, to the internet, to wireless. If somebody wanted to tamper with our election tabulation system, they'd have to break through a locked and alarm door and then break into a machine that's under a table and chained to it. And you'd think we'd notice that. So that's why the election tabulation system is absolutely safe. I, I understand that, but there is a huge database now created from all of those 7,000 systems for a couple hundred in the state of California. 58 that, in the state of California. That, nothing is unhackable. Well, but let me just say, the database, the voters' information is not in the tabulation because we have a secret ballot in California, so nobody knows how Councilmember Barnes voted or what your ballot was once they get into our office. Now, I'm not talking about the... the yeah. The, the votes themselves, but the data behind those votes. I'm in there, you're in there, everybody in this room is in, in there. In the voter registration system, that's yes. correct. But there's plenty of safeguards, both legal safeguards from confidentiality and technological safeguards. I just got an email from a deputy sheriff in Marin County who is with the Northern California Rapid Intelligence Council, which is all law enforcement people. And his responsibility is Marin, Sonoma, and Napa counties. And he's talking to our sheriff, and he's talking to our IT people, information technology people, to make sure we're following all the correct protocols on security, both for our voter registration system at the local level and for our ballot tabulation system. So there's a lot of attention being paid to this by Homeland Security at the national level as well. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else? All right, John, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. John. If anyone drives a Honda Element out in the side parking lot, your lights are on. <laughs> the last three digits of your license plate are 874. <coughs> you're looking at me, Ann, like it might be yours. Um, Ann, can you do me a favor, since you're closest, can you turn the AC down or turn the heat up? Thank AC you. Down. AC down. All right, next we're moving on to consent, calendar, uh, consent calendar. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the consent calendar as presented unless anyone would like an item pulled. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull item number six, please. All right, anyone else on any other item? All right, I'll entertain a motion to pass the consent calendar as presented, excluding item number six. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Krause. I have a second by Vice Mayor Dunsford. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Council Member Barnes, you've chosen item number six. Please explain. <laughs> well, uh, reading this, I'm pretty sure I understand it, but we are losing one parking place, not two. Is that correct? Initially, we will lose two, but we will recover one. So let me okay. just clarify for the public. Item number six is consideration of a resolution establishing a no parking zone on Lincoln Avenue adjacent to the depot shopping center, i.e. right in front of the train cars and the Palisades Deli, sorry. Uh, the recommended action is to adopt the resolution. Go ahead. Okay, uh, is this mandated to us by Caltrans? Do we have to do this, or is this city suggesting we do this, or a combination? Can good, I? E good evening, Mike Kern, Public Works Director. <laughs> I think I will defer to the mayor on that one. So this is a combination of agencies and efforts uh, that includes Caltrans for final permission, but it's through Napa Valley Transit Authority. As a result of the change and the increase in buses coming into and out of Calistoga and understanding that the bus stop that is currently in front of the ice cream shop, when the bus stops there, it blocks CalMart traffic and has created a significant traffic situation. And now on top of that bus, we at times have <coughs> the Napa Valley Transit Authority bus, the Lake County bus, and the shuttle. So you end up with, uh, in essence, gridlock uh, on that side of the street. So moving the bus stop to the other side and enhancing the current stop that's there um, will allow better service, better flow, 
and actually a safer uh, onboarding and offboarding of those buses because there'll be some modifications made to the sidewalk and the structure itself. Will this be permanent? That is the proposal, yes. Okay. Um, after the bridge is done, <coughs> will we regain those parking spots, one on each, or those bus stops, one on each side of the bridge that could be converted to parking? Because as, as I understand it, the loop will go around all on the south side of the street by the depot and then out at Brandon St Street. So when the bridge is completed, both of those bus stops will return. So we'll have three bus stops instead of four. So there's one on each side of the bridge. That's two. One at Brandon and one at the depot. That's so I'm four. saying just on Lincoln Avenue, sorry, there is one on each side of the bridge. There is one currently in front of the depot and one in front of the ice cream shop. So that's when four, the bridge is done, four stops. Yeah, there's four. If, if Lincoln Avenue Bridge wasn't under construction, when the, everything's done, there'll be three. Two at the bridge and then the enhanced stop at the depot in front of... Well, and the one in front of Calmart will be gone. Correct. Okay. That answers my questions. Thank you. All right. Anyone in the public, any questions about this? All right. Close the public comment. Any other council members? I will entertain a motion on this item as presented. So moved. Circle. We have a motion by Council Member Krause, a second by Council Member Lopez Ortega. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Nay. opposed? Nay. Got it. All right. Moving on. There are no public hearings this evening. Uh, moving on to general government, item number 10, consideration of a resolution proclaiming the termination of a local emergency due to the Tubbs fire as proclaimed by City Council on October 17, 2017, pursuant to Government Code Section 8550. Uh, the recommended action is to adopt the resolution. Taking us through this, will this be City... Oh. <coughs> City manager, nope, Kathy Flemson, unless the city manager who's still on the line wants to do it. Um, I, I'm more than happy to do it. Um, the, item, the item before city council right now is uh, essentially termination of the uh, uh, local emergency declaration that we did on October 17th. Um, if you have any specific questions about any of the actions we've had to take to um, preserve the Kimball watershed area, to do any of the cleanup uh, for for some of the damage caused up in and around uh, Kimball Reservoir. Um, Mike Kern is there in the audience. He can speak to that. Um, staff has spent, more recently, we've been concerned about excessive rainfall and what uh, erosion and sedimentation could do to Kimball. Um, we haven't, it hasn't been as bad as we've anticipated. I do know, uh, and feel free to ask uh, Public Works, uh, we do know that there there is more tilting of Kimball Reservoir. Um, is we, you know, we'll continue to watch and monitor and see if, you know, what continues. But at this point, we we feel that it's appropriate time to uh, essentially end the emergency declaration and terminate the uh, uh, the declaration by ordinance. Um, staff is spending significant amount of time now processing uh, our FEMA reimbursement claims as well as insurance claims for damages or costs. Uh, associated with our emergency response during the Tubbs fire. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Council members, questions? Council member Krause. Uh, no questions. I concur with uh, terminating the emergency at this time. Excellent. Anyone in the public have any questions? All right. I'll close public comment. Bring it back to the council for consideration and entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion that we adopt the attached resolution. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Krause. We have a second by Vice Mayor Dunsford. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Moving on to item number 11, consideration of a resolution approving, the, approving and authorizing the purchase of vacant land on Eddy Street in Calistoga, APN 011-215-001-005. In a budget adjustment from the unappropriated affordable housing fund balance for an amount not to exceed $500,000 from account number 78-4615-4910. The recommended action this evening is to adopt the resolution as presented. City Manager Feek, your name is on this one as well. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, uh, as you have the staff report before you, 
There is a small point three zero acre parcel of land located on Lower Washington Street. Uh, the parcel and, and information associated with it in the uh, agenda item and your packet. Um, this piece of land is currently owned by Cal Fox and uh, approximately six to eight months ago, uh, I approached Cal Spa. Uh, the city had recently acquired uh, a, a different vacant parcel of land uh, back in summer 2017. So I had approached Cal Spa to see if there is any interest in them selling uh, this vacant parcel of land. The, the idea and the goal for the city was to identify pieces of land to be used for affordable housing. This parcel, as well as the parcel we previously purchased, are both zoned multifamily residential, so the highest uh, uh, residential density uh, parcel that or uh, zoning that the city has. Um, this parcel has been used in years past for storage of, of ash on the site, and it's currently fenced in. Um, the as part of the terms of purchase, the city did an environmental phase one. We also did an appraisal. The appraisal for the land was at five hundred thousand dollars, which is what uh, the city has offered to CalSpa for the purchase of this piece of land. Um, one of the, the the terms that we would request from the owner is before we receive you know the before we close escrow on the property that they remove the ash to a different site, to a different property that they own, which they certainly would be their intention to keep that ash. Um, after the city acquires this land, after we close escrow, the city will have two adjoining parcels, which will make up approximately uh, 0.56 acres, which is a fairly sizable piece of land that we could use to pursue uh, an, a, a project uh, associated with ha uh, our housing needs in the city. Um, the terms that have been requested by the Cal Spa Board have been uh, two installment payments for the purchase of the land, uh, one payment of $250,000 uh, set out through terms uh, listed in our, uh, 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 let me, excuse me, I want to make sure I'm clear on the word, in our uh, agreement for purchase and sale of real property form, which is one of the attachments in your item. But then the second payment would be made after January 1, 2019, but sometime before uh, January 31, 2019. So it would essentially be uh, a second payment in the next calendar year. Uh, the action before you tonight would approve the purchase of the land for $500,000 and authorize the city manager to execute a certificate of acceptance, uh, accepting a grant deed, which conveys fee title to the property to the city and to take the other actions necessary uh, to purchase and acquire the property, similar to the actions uh, authorized in previous property acquisition. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, City Manager Feek. And just as a, a reminder, I did report out earlier on a closed, uh, from March 20th, the closed session that the council had on this particular property. It was at that time that the council, for the public's uh, information, authorized the city manager to negotiate on this property and offer terms. We are now bringing it back to the public uh, so that you're aware of the situation and can ask any questions. Council members, first, any questions about this particular parcel or this real estate trend, the transaction of real property, excuse me. All right, anyone in the public with any questions about this? All right, we will close public opinion. We'll bring it back, and I'll entertain a motion on this item as presented unless a modification is requested. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Council Member Barnes. We have a second by Council Member Krause. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, with that said, that's the last item. Dylan, you did a great job from a distance, but that doesn't let you off the hook for future meetings. Well, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to be very candid. I'm wearing my uh, KU basketball shorts. Still <laughs> in their final four loss. I wish I could uh, wear these more often at council meetings. Well, we'll take exception to that because not all of us are you fans of KU. You can't say that Dylan isn't transparent. Yeah, exactly. All right, we'll adjourn to our next regularly scheduled meeting, which is Tuesday, April 17th at 6 p.m. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Oh, sorry. We're adjourning to... So the regular session is adjourned. We are now adjourning to a special meeting of the Calistoga Public Facilities Corporation. Let it be noted that...